Welcome back to our lesson in financial management. For today, we are going to talk about the major financial management decisions and also the role of the financial manager. So financial management is a decision-making process concerned with planning, acquiring, and utilizing funds in a manner that achieves the firm's desired goals. It is also described as the process for and the analysis of making financial decisions in the business context. So therefore, financial management focuses on how we're going to use our money, our finances properly in order to achieve the objectives of the organization. It is also referred to as the managerial finance, corporate finance, and business finance. So there are three major financial management decisions. So the first one is on the working capital management. So working capital management uh, deals with the management of our working capital. And this working capital includes our short-term assets and the short-term liabilities. So when we say short-term assets, those are assets that can be used within uh, one year or within an operating cycle. And the short-term liabilities are the liabilities that are due within one year. So what are the inclusions in the working capital? So we have the cash, accounts receivable, and the inventory. And the short-term liabilities are those that we have incurred, uh, th those liabilities we have incurred for use in our daily operations. So therefore, for working capital management, it involves the cash management, receivables management, inventory management, and the accounts payable management. If we're going to manage our working capital, uh, that means we're managing the day-to-day -day activities that will ensure that the firm has sufficient resources to continue the operations and avoid costly interruptions. It is also involved in the activities related to the receipts and disbursement of cash. Then we proceed to capital budgeting. So if we're talking about capital budgeting, it involves the planning and managing of the firm's long-term investments. So for this type of decisions, it involves huge amount of money because investments are for long term. So examples are capital expenditure projects like you're going to construct a building, you're going to acquire machineries, or you have uh, other long term investment plans. So in a capital budgeting, the financial manager tries to identify investment opportunities that are worth more to the firm than they cost to acquire. So therefore, when you make decisions on capital budgeting, you need to project the future benefits. And these future benefits in the form of the cash flows should exceed the cost of our investment because we're not going to push through or pursue a specific project wherein our uh, costs are greater than what we are expected to receive. So that is not a worthwhile uh, type of investment if mas dako ang atong magasto or dako ang outflows, dako atong puhunan kumpara sa ato ang madawat or ato ang ma-earn in the future. Then we have the capital structure that involves the mixture of the long-term debt and the equity that the firm uses to finance its operations. If we can remember, there are two sources of funding. We have the debt and the equity. So the debt includes mga utang and the equity uh, is coming from the investment of the owners. So we have the option if we're going to borrow money or are we going to uh, invite more investors or we're going to uh, encourage them to invest more in the company. So the financial manager has 
to concerns in this area how much should the firm borrow and what would be the mixture of debt and equity that is best so that that uh, the decision to so the amount would include determining which of the two ang mas palabon na to, mas palabon ba ang utang or mas palabon ba ang investment of the owners. And the second concern is uh, what are the least expensive sources of funds for the firm. So if we are able to determine the mixture, so pwedeng na ay uh, capital from the owners o niya na pay borrowings or purely borrowings bata and then walay coming from the uh, capital of the owners but we need to choose among these um, sources of funds what would be the least expensive because of course we want to save and we want to earn more so if we picture the firm as a pie, the firm's capital structure determines how that pie is sliced. So what percentage of the firm's cash flow goes to the creditors and which portion will go to the shareholders? So creditors here are those from which we acquired our debt, diba? Dito na ng utang and other shareholders. So this is this is the claim as the the shareholders has the claim have the claim on the equity so firms have a great deal of flexibility in choosing a financial structure the question of whether one structure is be better than the other for a particular firm is the heart of the capital structure issue aside from the financing mix the financial manager needs to decide exactly how and where to raise the money so the expenses associated with raising long-term financing can be considerable. So different possibilities must be carefully evaluated. So the major decision maker in terms of the financial management uh, is the financial manager. So he's the one who takes care of all important financial functions of an organization. The person in charge should maintain a far-sightedness in order to ensure that the funds are utilized in the most efficient manner. His actions directly affect the profitability growth and the goodwill of the firm. So, uh, the financial manager is the one who makes the decisions in behalf of the stockholders. So, because of this role, Instead of listing possible goals for the financial manager, we really need to answer this important question. So from the stockholder's point of view or from the owner's point of view, what is a good financial management decision? So if we assume that stockholders buy stock because they seek to gain financially, then the answer is obvious. Good decisions increase the value of the stock and poor decisions decrease the value of the stock. So therefore, the financial manager acts in the shareholders' best interests by making decisions that would increase the value of the shareholders' stocks. So therefore, the appropriate goal for financial manager would be to maximize the current value per share of the existing stock. So the goal of maximizing the value of the stock avoids the problems associated with the different goals. So there is no ambiguity in this criterion. And there is no short run versus long run issue. We explicitly mean that our goal is to maximize the current stock value. So as stated earlier, the financial manager is the main financial decision maker of the company. So his work involves different functions. The first one is the raising of funds. So in order to meet the obligation of the business, it is important to have enough cash and liquidity. And the financial manager here needs to find ways on how to raise funds 
in behalf of the firm. So again, it is either through equity or through debt. Aside from that, he needs to decide which would be the ratio between the debt and equity. So it is important to maintain a good balance between equity and debt. So the second function is how to allocate the funds. So the funds should be allocated in a manner that they are optimally used. So when we say optimal, so best way on how to use or how to utilize the funds. So when we utilize the fund, funds, then we have to consider the following, the size of the firm and its growth capability, so the status of the assets, whether they are long-term or short-term, and the mode by which the funds are raised. So these financial decisions directly and indirectly influence other managerial activities. Therefore, you have to form a good asset mix and proper allocation of funds. Then we have the profit planning. So when we talk about profit planning, we need to plan the profits in terms of the proper usage of it uh, in order to bring more profits to the firm. So profit arises due to many factors such as pricing, industry competition, state of the economy, mechanism of demand and supply, and the cost and the output. So the healthy mix of variable and fixed factors of production can lead to an increase in the profitability of the firm. Fixed costs are incurred by the use of fixed factors of production such as land and machinery. In order to maintain a tandem, it is important to continuous, continuously value the depreciation cost of fixed cost of production. Considering all these costs and also the uh, revenues that are generated by the firm, so the financial managers should see to it that the profit is being generated by the firm. So in order to continue the operations and be able to sustain the fourth function of the financial manager is the understanding of the capital markets. So shares of a company are traded on stock exchange and there is a continuous sale and purchase of securities. Hence, a clear understanding of capital market is an important function of a financial manager. When securities are traded on stock market, it involves a huge amount of risk and so the financial manager should be able to understand and calculate the risks. It's on the discretion of a financial manager as to how this as to how to distribute the profits. Many investors do not like the firm to distribute the profits among shareholders as dividend, but instead invest it in the business to further enhance the growth. The practices of a financial manager directly impact the operation in the operation in the capital market. If you like this video, don't forget to click like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to be updated with the latest video lessons. Thank you for watching.